Hello, everybody. I'm Larry the Fury, John Francola. As we begin the 2021 year, we're back. We're back covering high school football, and we're starting by interviewing some of the coaches and schools that we cover, and it's exciting, John. We're going to start going around and seeing some of our friends that we haven't seen in a long time. But most important, John, they're going to tee the ball up in September, nine weeks of football and a playoff. We're getting back to normal. Larry, I can't believe it. You know how much I hated being away? Even last year when we did bits and pieces of games in the dark, we can't do that. They got to hear us. You know, we got to make mistakes for the group out there. They <laughs> love us when we make mistakes. Oh, they, they sure do. So our, our hope is to go to the different schools in Northern Bergen County that WCTV has a great interaction with. A lot of the schools will be playing Westwood. Some of the schools you would know from from our past coverage and we'll talk to the coaches and see try to get an update on their team how they look their strengths their schedule how they're going to react to it how they're reacting to this new post i'm going to say post pandemic i'm hoping so it should be a very interesting but most important we're on the football fields again oh, and God. we're out we'll be able to stay young again you know i think <laughs> instead of getting older every game we do we get younger and younger yeah I'm can tired. you imagine i'm tired we got to get ahead i'm tired i'm tired of sitting on my couch looking at my wall i know i know I what my wall you. looks like and like everybody in this country we all did the same thing so we hope you enjoyed the show and we hope you enjoyed this interaction we have with our friends and coaches we want to thank them all for giving up their time this is a very busy time for them but they said okay, and they gave up their times to come with us, to talk to us, and give us a preview of their school. We're here with the athletic director of Westwood, Dan Vavino. Dan, thank you very much for taking time to come and talk with us, being athletic director, like all the athletic directors probably in the state of New Jersey, you've had a challenging 16 months. Talk a little bit about last year, the challenges you had then, and coming forward today in getting ready for the 2021 year. Well, first, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's always great to talk with you guys. Um, I definitely would say the 2020-21 school year was uh, unique, challenging, um, to say the least. Uh, but we're education, we try to learn from everything. Um, I definitely think there were some silver linings and some good things that we were able to learn um, from this year. Uh, we de definitely took a step back, took a breath, got reminded in every program, as you know, especially the fall and the winter didn't have championships in terms of states and things like that, of why we're here. Um, I, I saw no different effort and commitment from our coaches, from our athletes, and even from their parents and the community, whether they were watching on a stream or eventually allowed to be here. Um, but I think it was a good reminder in that sense of what high school athletics are all about. Um, you got to do things the right way. When you do, a lot of times winning becomes a byproduct, but it's really not what it's about. And it's about the life lessons and dealing with adversity. You know, when I spoke to the seniors at the end of the year, uh, we do a little awards night. We were fortunate enough to be able to have it in person by that time. You know, we talked about it was kind of uh, catch-22 where what they did in athletics made them ready to handle the adversity that COVID presented to them. And then they were able to handle that so well because of that. But on top of it, that being probably the biggest challenge they ever faced, how much more ready are they for the world now that they went through that? Sure, they missed out on some championship playoffs and things of that nature. Um, but really, they gained way more valuable life lessons than the average student athlete that's come through here. So uh, we try to look at the silver linings, but I don't, I don't think it's fair to call that a silver lining. I think it's a reality. Um, specific challenges, yes, it was, um, it was new for everyone. It was new for the people sending down the orders and then for us to kind of sort through it and uh, make sense of it all. And then uh, it would change. I think Mr. Connolly, the principal, had the best line to sum up the COVID rules that I heard all year. Wrestling, they had great matches. Kids would grapple for six, eight minutes, but don't shake hands after. So you know, <laughs> that's just the kind of the kind of stuff we dealt with, with we got to make this work. We got to do everything we can for our student athletes. Well, we're going around talking to uh, football coaches as we gear up for our football coverage, but you have to gear up for a fall season. Talk a little bit about this year's fall schedule for you, including the football side of it, but the other sports that are, that are involved with Westwood. Yeah, so it's, you know, 
It's definitely been challenging, I'd say, for the fall, especially we really played a limited amount of games last year. We were unfortunate. We got shut down a couple of times across the board in every sport. Um, we also had our teams compartmentalized a little bit where a varsity coach might have gotten a full season to see some freshmen and sophomores, but they really didn't get to between being separated and between the shortened schedule. So trying to add independent games and really know what our teams are has been a great challenge, you know, where you're trying to guess, you know, what's going to fit our schedule. Do we need to challenge this team a little more? Is this team rebuilding a little more? We've had some coaching turnover. So I'd say that's been the biggest challenge of the fall is we have to kind of redefine our identity because it really was in, in some ways a not a lost season in terms of the experience, but in terms of program growth, it was a very difficult year. Um, so I'd say that's been the biggest challenge uh, holistically with the schedules, um, specifically into the football schedule. Uh, one thing that COVID again impacted was the Super Football Conference, which we're a member of, is 112 schools from the tip of you know Sussex County all the way down through Hudson County. Um, and that's why we see schools like Lincoln now where we may not have in the past. Um, but with COVID, we had some programs shut down. We had some teams really get into survival mode. And the conference does offer an Ivy division, which is a non-playoff league. We lost two traditional opponents in Dumont and Pascac Hills. They left our division. That happened in other areas of the league. So the league had to completely reorganize for just a one-year schedule. And in walks Passaic County. That's where we got Passaic Valley, West Milford, and Lakeland from because they've kind of shrunk in size a little bit. And when you add that in with we were not going to ever give back that Riverdale game. We love that tough game, good rivalry. You know, we'd certainly have a bear of a football schedule, but listen, these guys are up for the challenge, and you know, we want to get better every week. I'd have to can't let you go without asking you about next year. Forget not this September, next September when in football things change a little bit. A lot of people are excited about it. Just tell the folks a little bit what we can expect next year. I know it's a long way off, but it's going to be here soon. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is um, you've heard forever you know, state champs. And people referred to that in football on the public side because you won the last game you could, you know, referencing us 2013 and 14 to most recently where we were North 1 Group 2 sectional champs and people just say, hey, you're state champs. Um, I'll equate it to girls basketball, I think has been the most recent where they've gone beyond that. When they win a state sectional title like they did a couple years ago, um, and, and the year before that, they then keep playing down. Then there's, there's four group two champions across the whole state, North one, North two, Central, and South. About three years ago, we finally got football to add a week, and we played one more game, but you still had two teams left atop every group um, and not a true state champ within your group. So 2022, for the first time in New Jersey history, the state is going to play down to true group champions, which means in groups one, two, three, four, and five, there'll be one team standing in the state. You'll still win a sectional title. It's still special. It's still as good as it was in 2006 or any of the other years. Um, but now you can play down to, to the opportunity to play a true group champ. It's definitely challenging. There are some, some hammer up schools in group two in, in Haddonfield, West Deptford, in the Camden area in the south. But you know New Jersey likes a good challenge. So we're very excited. Um, for that in two years, you'll see an eight game regular season and then a lot of options on the back end with how to complete your season, whether you're in the playoffs or not. I, for one, are looking forward, really looking forward to getting down to one. I want to thank you for taking time. I want to thank you for all you've done. You and all the athletic directors, not only that we deal with, that went out through the whole state. I know talking to a few of you how you had games canceled and then you had to find games. You're running around, you're on the phone trying to get games. It was crazy, but you guys did some yeoman work and you did it for the kids. So from a, a parent, thank you very much for all you've done, all the ADs, and especially you. We know how hard you work and we look forward to working with you here at Westwood while we hopefully cover the five home games that you have. Yeah, no, listen, my pleasure. Uh, you know, that's what I'm here to do. and. This community is so great, and the parents were all bought in, the administration, the board, the staff, all the way up. It made it as easy as it could be this year, so I, I reciprocate that and thank everyone for their help. It's a great relationship between Westwood and the community, and we're a little bit part of that. Thank you. Danny Vivino. Hi. I'm here today with Dennis Hard, the um, over 100 victory coach from Westwood. Dennis Hard, another season, another year. Uh, you, you have a fantastic uh, team in the past, but let's just talk about this year's schedule to start off with. And just looking, you have, I cannot believe the number of teams you're playing right off the bat. 
Can you sort of elaborate a little bit about the schedule that you uh, have? Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, this schedule, I think it's, you know, it's the toughest schedule that Westwood's ever faced in the program. Uh, you know, we got some really tough teams to go against. There's no gimmies. Uh, league changed a little bit. Two teams got out that we don't play anymore. So it, it's going to be a demanding uh, year. Well, you know, looking right, right off the bat, I mean, Ramsey, uh, a fantastic squad last year, one of the best teams in the county. Um, to start off with them, and then you have Mawa. Sure. And then you have Riverdale. Right. Unbelievable yeah. schedule. Yeah, uh, I mean, Ramsey, we got to be out the gate. Uh, we have to be ready right away. Uh, they had a great season last year. They went 6-1, and one, uh, beat some quality teams um, throughout the season. And, uh, you know, we, only, we were limited. We only played four games, so uh, we didn't get a chance to play them last year. Uh, so that's, that's going to be huge. Tell us where we're at right away. Let's look at your, your team. Let's do the offense first. Uh, your starting quarterback that you have at the present time. Yeah, obviously. right now, uh, yeah, Silvio Picnic has done a great job. Uh, last week we went to a seven-on-seven -seven tournament, and uh, sophomore Robbie Carsich was phenomenal. Uh, did not come off the field, played both sides of the ball. And, uh, you know, we, we weren't sure what was going to happen. We were going there with, uh, you know, with a second-string quarterback, and uh, lo and behold, we win the tournament. We win the whole thing. We beat some... Uh, Real quality teams, uh, Northern Highlands, Del Barton, uh, you know West Essex. We it, it was it was a good tournament. But you know, once you get something like that in your program, where you establish, you have a senior quarterback coming in, and now you see this young man who steps up and plays, makes it going to make the senior better, and this young man can always jump in and take Westwood to the promised land. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing like having competition. I mean, the competition at, you know, every position that's, you know, we're looking for. And, uh, yeah, that's going to make both players uh, a lot better. Um, you know, I mean, we realize, too, seven on seven is not real football. Um, you know, I mean, but it was great for us uh, to play hard and compete at the level that we uh, showed during that tournament. How about speaking about your starting running back? Uh, a family name who's been around for years, the name Giordano? Yeah, Joey Giordano is <laughs> one of our co-captains. Uh, senior came in. Came back in great shape, and it, you know he's really worked hard. He's done a, a, a nice job so far. Um, but we have some <clears throat> other running backs in the mix. Uh, Kobe Lawton will be as a receiver. Will also be uh, in the backfield. Um, Anthony Sabatella, the play, uh, starting inside linebacker, will be a running back in the mix. Uh, so, um, and, and, you know, we get we have some uh, weapons. Oh, without a doubt. Just looking at your your running backs, uh, you also have the young man from. Uh, uh, down the road a piece, you know, from a long way back, number 44. I love that number when yeah. people carry. Got to talk about that young man because yeah. he can play quarterback, he can play defense. Right, yeah, Jack Dugan is, you know, a real good athlete for us. I mean, uh, um, out of necessity, I think he'll be back at his rover position from last year. Uh, you know, he plays that like a linebacker. Uh, but he'll be in the mix, uh, you know, with us offensively too. And, um, you know, he – all the, a lot of these players played as sophomores. They started, and that's what's so valuable for us, uh, for them to come into the season with a, a year under their belt as juniors. Um, you know, not, not a lot of teams can say that. So, Well, you've had a lot of uh, good classes coming in the last two or three years from the both places, West Wind, Washington Township, and this really has built your program, including linemen and fantastic receivers and athletes. So that'll help. What about some of your receivers on, on the offense? Who would you be looking to? Uh, yeah, Johnny Ruff, uh, you know, a great condition athlete to play two-way player. Had it, uh, is one of our top receivers. Um, you know, I mentioned before, Kobe Lawton uh, getting it done. Um, Tommy Linares, unfortunately, uh, uh, had a little setback, has an injury. But, he, you know, he, he'll be in the mix once he gets back uh, as a receiver, one of our senior co-captains. Uh, just on touch on, like what you were saying, with the junior program and everything. You know, I think it was just so important that Westwood and Township came together. Uh, some st strong teams are going to emerge from there. Um, our sophomore class, <clears throat> we have good numbers. Freshmen coming in, we have 23. Uh, right now, our, you know, our senior class is light with numbers. Uh, uh, not a big class, but, you know, we have some quality kids there. But, but the numbers, I think, they're taking over. And kids involved in a program, you know, with the two towns coming together is going to be huge. Just listening to some of the people around town, a lot of good linemen, which we didn't have for many years coming into the program. Some young, big, strong kids, which will help your offense on both sides of the ball, but especially on the offense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, back when our offensive line coach, Tommy O'Melio, back when he played, you know, they had 300-pound linemen. Um, so, 
uh, you know, we have one big boy, Chris Picnic. He's one of our, he's our left tackle, big, strong kid. Uh, come back and really worked hard in the offseason to get ready. What about on your defense? Some of your, your big players on defense? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, sophomore R.J. Usher got a little time last year as a freshman. He'll be the nose. Um, Kevin Kim. Kevin Kim's another two-way lineman for us, plays defensive end, play, uh, probably be at the other uh, tackle spot. Um, John Mactis started as a sophomore. He'll be in the mix on defense. And also uh, Justin Singer, uh, junior, last year played, uh, started on defense as a sophomore. So these guys had some valuable experience and. Uh, you know, that's, that's going to uh, be real important for us. How about your kicking game? I'm punting and, and of course, field goals and extra points. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. right now, you know, I mean, uh, Jack Dugan does a lot of that. He was a punter. Um, uh, you know, he can place kick and whatnot. We would like to. Um, we just picked up a, a junior. Uh, Connor uh, Sklavunas came, and uh, hopefully he'll do some place kicking for us. Uh, we have to iron out some, of the, you know, our punting game and everything. So, you know, that, that, that we have to work on. So you're going to have a, it looks like an, another excellent year with players, you know, young, young team, which is great. Yeah. And you should be able to compete in a very difficult league, to say oh, the absolutely. least. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, you know, like we were talking before, uh, you got to be lucky, too. You can't have the injuries. Uh, you know, the way your schedule stacks up, it's, it's tough. Uh, there's no gimmies. Again, you know, you have to be ready each week. But, you know, you look at the league, uh, and your schedule, it's, it's probably the toughest schedule that I've seen at Westwood in a long time. But I know with the young people that you have and your program, your coaching, you'll be able to really compete and get some quality wins. And to me, this will build for year to year to year with the two towns bringing all these young men to give you what you need to, 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 uh, to build into this, uh, you know, into the winning ways. Right. And, and uh, you know, um, that uh, doesn't go without... You know, my coaching staff, I'm blessed with a great coaching staff. Offensively, uh, Bobby Guy, who's been with me the whole time, um, uh, and Eddie Surrey on the offensive side uh, do a great job. Um, today we're actually working on an offensive day. We'll, you know, we're hoping to get a spirited practice, get things going again. Um, and Amir Sadad works on the defensive side. He's, he's done a real uh, good job as a defensive coordinator. We changed up. That we went to the 3-4. Th uh, uh, but we'll, we'll be playing... Uh, you know, multiple looks. We'll be given a shade look and uh, a four-man front also. So, the one key thing this time around, WCTV will be there and we'll be doing your five games. You know, right. starting with Ramsey and and go right on and probably we'll do if all shakes out right. Riverdale. You know, so that's always a big game. Yeah, and that'll be away. But so will be plenty of showing on TV the quality players, the kids in Washington Township and Westwood that do a great job. And the coaching staff, in my book, has been one of the best I've seen many years. You guys do a great job. Oh, we appreciate it. And uh, we're hoping that we can make it and a lot of wins this year and keep everybody healthy. And Westwood football will be up as always. Now, you got over 100 wins now, right? You put mm -hmm. that in the back pocket? Well, that's, you know, I mean, it's not, you know, that's I mean, not it's, that important. No. I mean, it's, it's what we go 1-0 and each week uh, during, during this season. Um, we are playing a nine-game schedule. Um, you know, we're lucky enough that we do have five games at home versus the four uh, games away. Uh, so, you know, it, it's going to be a big challenge. Well, you know, from WCTV, from Larry, myself, Ida Studio, and all the other people that work on WCTV, we love to do your games. It's been home to us. It's exciting. You always and the job that the coaching staff and the athletic and the kids do to to uh, excel in football is fantastic. Good luck from WCTV. We'll be in your corner the whole way. Stay healthy, of course, Absolutely. and get everybody back. And let's win some games, and maybe we'll see Giant Stadium again. We hope. Hey, you know, I mean, I mean, that's our ultimate goal. I mean, uh, you know, we thank you guys for all your support and everything you give us. Uh, the kids love it. They go home right away, watch it, the game that night. Um, you know, it's a, in the talk of the town uh, as far as the production that you guys put together is awesome. We love it. Yeah. <laughs> You love it. So it's a great year. Let's have wins. Let's stay healthy. And good luck to you and your coaches. Thank you. Hello, everybody. 
Larry Furry back again. We're here at Paramus Catholic High School with the head football coach, Steve Ryback. In front of the trophy case, you get a shot of all the trophies that are here. These are just some of the trophies that the student athletes at Paramus Catholic have acquired over the years. And we're going to talk to the new head coach, but not an old coach, but the new head coach of Paramus Catholic, Steve Ryback. And Steve, I want to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and to be here with WCTV. We get a little insight into you as being a new coach, new head coach, and uh, your team. Last year, you were the uh, offensive coordinator here, right? Yep, correct. Uh, now, how does the difference for you change between being a coordinator and now taking over the job at head coach at Paramus Catholic? It, it's absolutely insane. The, the amount of things that you don't think of that you have to take care of and do it, it's unbelievable from scheduling to, to getting equipment to helping with the touchdown club there's just a lot of moving pieces that you don't think of and talking to people into. like me talking to make, people like and, you and yeah. the reporters that come um want to see want to talk to you want they want to get an insight like we want to get an insight into your into yeah. your to your team and it's a when you talk to coaches they say when you become the head coach it's like almost like a a 24-hour day job you're constantly running you found that to be true absolutely you can ask my wife about that you know getting phone calls at 10 11 o'clock at night uh watching the film two o'clock in the morning it's definitely a, a never-ending job which is, so which is nice. now talk a little bit about your team um some of that you are just the uh, student athletes who are going to be on the field talk a little about them and their strengths and what are you looking for yeah so this year we have a very very strong offensive line um, we have two seniors on an offensive line that are super talented scholarship players. The one kid, Asa Neal, big 6'5 tackle. Another kid, Nick Crespo, who not only is a super talented kid, but he is a straight A student. So being our center, he's really, really smart, can make all those calls. He knows what he's looking at. So we're, we're looking forward to have that offensive line anchor our team. And on top of that, we have some really nice weapons. Um, we have Zayo Powell, who's a wide receiver, who's another scholarship player. Um, and he's a leader, works really, really hard. Uh, another offensive kid, Zamar Faith, that he's a 4-4 kid, he can really burn. You know, he, he could run. Uh, defensively, we're gonna be led by Nick Cromey, who's our middle linebacker. He started as a sophomore last year, so he should really be developed and ready to go and, and lead us on the field this year. And do you have, everybody looks to the quarterback, do you have some, some prospects there, or you have someone leading the pack at quarterback? Uh, yeah, right now we have uh, Luca Lombardi, who's gonna be a junior. Um, he's another really, really smart kid. He can make every read. He knows what he's looking at on the field. So he's going to be leading us in that huddle. Now, your, your first game you play? Uh, St. Peter's Prep, Attack. down there at Caven Point. So. And you have to go down there. Well, you start yeah. quick, don't you? Yeah, it's a great place to play. The atmosphere is awesome. Um, coming from a Hudson County family on my mother's side, you know, that's a, that's a really special field for us to play on. So. so the schedule is difficult as you go. Do you travel? Do you, does, will the team do any traveling outside of New Jersey? No, we, we won't be traveling outside you're, the state. You're going to stay in. Now, here you have three games mm -hmm. because I think you lost the St. Joe's game as a home game. They, have, they asked for a switch, and you accommodated them, correct? Yep, they're playing down south. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had a, a long-term relationship with, with Marangi over there, and he gave me a call and said, he has a commitment, so you know I'm, I'm fine with that. So now, what's the rest of your schedule this this year? Now, how are you approaching this preseason with this pandemic? How does it affect you? Well, I don't say a pandemic. The pandemic, I'm hoping is over. I keep saying I hope it's over. How does this uh, pandemic affected you? Uh, it's been a little difficult with some of the accommodations we have to make. We're, we're taking temperatures. Uh, we have COVID forms we have to fill out. Um, there's masks and meetings that we had to wear, um, but nothing that has really gotten in the way of us. It's more conveniences than anything that would really hurt us, you know, on the football level. And that's so. just, that's between now and let's say September 1st. Yeah. What about, I know coaches always tell me, we work very hard January, February, March, April in the weight room, talking to kids, putting game plans in. How did the not coming to school, remote learning, close down, open schools, how did that affect your program in getting the kids ready for conditioning? Um, for conditioning, it made it very, very difficult because not everybody could be here. We had um, a hybrid setup where some kids were here, some kids weren't. Kids had difficulty getting here on time. Um, but it's you know stuff that you just have to deal with and you have to, to work with. The most difficult part was staying on top of their academics because when they're here, they have study hall every day after school because academics here are huge for us. But staying on top, top of them academically when they're remote was very, very difficult, and it, it took a, a whole team of us to deal with that. 
Um, but it, it's something that I think we were very successful with. Yeah. So. I know I was reading in today's paper, they had a big article about Joe Judge going into his second year, and he stresses conditioning. Conditioning is so important. That's got to be the first. How do you uh, attack the conditioning? What's your, pro what's your process during the day, during the practices and conditioning? So strength and conditioning, um, we do those separately. We have two certified trainers on staff, so they get a, a complete plan together starting from January all the way through the end of the season to keep them in condition and to get their strength to where it needs to be. Okay, we, we talked off the air. Your first uh, scrimmage is going to be in, um, in August, and you're going to be playing. Uh, what's the date and who are you going to play? Uh, August 16th, we have St. Joe's Hamilton uh, up here at 11 o'clock to start out. And then on August 20th, we have St. Joe's Montvale um, at 10 a.m., coming here all right so, and you, so yeah we know we explain why you have st joe's because you're not going to be playing them you yeah. wouldn't actually scrimmage them if you're going to play them but since you've dropped that game you get a chance to play them yeah. <laughs> although it's a preseason your first home game yeah uh our first home game is seton hall prep it's not until i think believe week six that we have and we only have three home games this year and you do play bergen catholic uh and a home one game right yep we have bergen catholic uh don bosco and DePaul. so we got a oh that's a nice one uh, heck of a schedule uh, now we yeah. have to that's a nice schedule <laughs> um we we want to uh, advise you i don't think you remember it or you might always one game for paramus catholic it's been a staple at paramus catholic we have a special game we used to have the cannoli bowl where we brought <laughs> cannolis and handed them out but over the last three or four years we have a game and we refer to it as the meatball bowl. John Frank Holler, my partner, who's not here today, he's uh, doing something else for us. His wife makes meatballs, we bring sandwiches and we hand them out after the game. <laughs> so you're going to get a meatball sandwich, your coach is <laughs> get a meatball sandwich. We'll try to give some sandwiches out to the, uh, the opposing team, but this time Bergen Catholic, and we hope everybody has a nice time with it. And we get a kick out of doing it. We make the sandwich at halftime and hand them out. Yeah. So it's, it's something new that you're going to see. And you're going to be involved in it because you're going to be having you involved in it and you sandwiches after the game. Hopefully you'll have you be in a good mood to eat it. But we will do your Bergen game here, and it's called the meatball game. So when you, we call and say we're coming for the meatball game, don't think I'm crazy, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That game's huge for me because Vito's like an uncle to me. So that that's going to be a big game. Uh, so, so we'll have Uncle Vito here, and yeah. uh, we won't have Vito and his family make the meatballs because <laughs> I hear they make them in the shape of uh, footballs, and we don't want that. We want them <laughs> nice and round. So you have a great schedule. You have a tough schedule. It's the first year. Um, how's your freshman team coming in? My freshman team is, is awesome. This is probably the best freshman team I've had since I've coached anywhere. Really? Yeah, super talented kids, uh, big kids, uh, good students we brought in. Uh, we have about 30 kids on the freshman team, so I'm really, really excited to have a nice base to, to build this program on for the well, future. That's how you build a program. You start with yeah. freshmen, and the freshmen come sophomores, and another freshman. Next thing you know, you don't have a team, you have a program. Correct. Yeah. I want to thank you for taking time. I know how busy you are. You're going to have to get out and practice in this beautifully cool weather today. Today's a little cooler. It's only 85 degrees. We wish you luck, Coach. We'll be here. We'll be watching. We're going to come to some of your scrimmages, and we'll be around to uh, be here at Paramus Catholic. We're always well-treated here. We feel very comfortable coming here. They've always made us comfortable, and you're making us feel comfortable today. No, thank you. We, we appreciate it. We pre appreciate your support, and uh, we're excited for a, a big year this year. So. That's Steve Rayback. We hope we wish him all the luck in the world. And uh, we'll be back to Paramus Catholic to cover a couple of games. And we we'll hope they get very exciting. I'm here with Vito Campanelli. Uh, a, a fan of ours. We've known him forever. He's now at Bergen Catholic and we're going to talk about it since you're the number one seed in the state at, and we'll start with in 2020 coach how many uh, uh, people are you bringing back to the game? Starters. Well, yeah John so we have 18 guys that have started multiple games coming back out of the 22 spots and you know we feel pretty good about that but um, really the only rankings that matter are the one that's done in December. So we're just, uh, we're just going to keep playing every week and, and hopefully uh, stay the course of where we are right now. You know, before I came to this interview, I was trying to get a lot of information about you, about Bergen Catholic, and I was flipping through and all of a sudden I pushed the button and I had an interview, March 7, 2021. You were being interviewed by a guy by the name of 
Jeff Fisher. Sure, yeah. Unbelievable. You know what? That was one of the best interviews I've ever heard you. You, you were fantastic. Right I off the bat. Appreciate <laughs> it. I because I know you for a long time, but but what a great interview. He, he went through and and you concluded in that interview when you talked about what you try to do with your football team. You know, as far as training and what you have to do. Three things that he you brought up and he also agreed with. One was uh, conditioning, physical conditioning, sure. obviously competition which you always have and the last one of course don't let any big plays and these are three categories you know in the game right yeah i think they all they all kind of coincide right so if you're conditioned you'll be you'll be smart enough to to make sure that you're you have the mental wherewithal to to make those plays right and then competing is something that we try and instill in every practice that we have here you know we're fortunate enough that we have a, a, a great deal of really good players, so it, able to compete on a daily basis. And then, you know, today we just ran our conditioning test this morning. We had a 92% pass rate, and uh, that, that's really good for our team right here now. We could mention some of your coming back. I think you have at least 18 players that you're going to be able to, that were here for 2020, leading with your quarterback, of course, who's... Yeah, I mean, Steve, Steve's coming back, and, and I think the the greatest asset that we have is in our division Steve's the only returning starter at quarterback and a as you know this this is a defensive laden division there's going to be some big time players in every game uh, just having him back and, and the fact that he played a ton as a sophomore and, and was a starter as a junior um, he's really a seasoned guy and, and it's really kind of a great deal of collaboration and mm -hmm. what we're doing on a week to week with the offense and uh the guy's handing the ball to is not, not exactly a bad player either. <laughs> oh, so, no. you know, Ryan, Ryan's had a, an unbelievable career here. Um, just, you know, I, I think as is, is good of a running back as you're going to find anywhere in the Northeast. And he's up to 218 pounds right uh. now. Um, he's a Princeton commit. He's been a, a mainstay in our program. He's a four-year varsity player. Unbelievable. They keep coming, and they're going to stay here, Vito, with you. <laughs> they love that fatherly image, and yeah. they'll be here. All right, let's start the first week. Your first oh, yeah. game. All right. <laughs> You're going to be going to Ohio. We are. Yeah. Okay. So. Maslin, Ohio. <laughs> I have to remind me to tell you my story about Maslin, Ohio. <laughs> I go way back. Right. But right. you're going to Maslin, Ohio. And talk about your game there. Yeah, I think, you know, Archbishop Hoban, they've done an amazing job out there. They, they've won three of the last four Ohio State championships. They've won 52 of their last 55 games. Uh, Coach Tim Terrell, he's done an amazing job. Uh, he's a disciple of Jim Tressel, worked with him at Youngstown State. Mm -hmm. Um, they're, they're just, you know, they're they're a great program, and you know, as we said with competition earlier, we want to compete at the highest level. Uh, they finished number five in America last year. We feel like we have a, a team that we want to line up against great competition, and uh, we're certainly going to get that in the in the first weekend out in Akron. Yeah. Will you be playing at the Rubber Bowl? Yeah, we're playing right at no, we're playing right at Archbishop Hoban, and, and uh, you know they're 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 a blue collar, tough football team. Uh, they pride themselves on being a physical outfit, and I, I think that it's really you know we got a tiger by the tail right out the gate, no no question. In 1961, I drove up to Maslin, Ohio, at the Rubber Bowl, as Capital University, where I went to school in Columbus, right. was playing a game against Hiram. Okay, sure. And Hiram was the place where. The Cleveland Browns always practice, right. yeah. and we used to see Jimmy Brown with his Cadillac, Is pink right? Cadillac, driving around. All the years around. I knew you, I never heard that. Okay. Oh, the Ohio. <laughs> like, when I saw that, I said, I'm ready to go out with you on that. Well, we're taking a Greyhound. We won't have a pink Cadillac out there. <laughs> <laughs> and he had the pink Cadillac. I'll tell you what. Unbelievable, because I, I went close to Ohio State in a small school by then, sure. Capital University. But that's, so that's your opening game. That's going to be quite a game. You then go, your second game is home. And you're going to be playing a team from Delaware. Sure. And talk about that team a little bit. Smyrna's, again, a, a, again, they're a top five program in Delaware. They lost one game away from being a state champ down there last year. Um, they had a great quarterback coming in uh, from DeMath in, in Maryland. I, I think they're, you know, they, they have a, a lot of blue-chip blue type players in their program. Um, and you know, we're just looking for the, the best teams we could play in the region, and they're certainly one of them. Let's look at some of the regular schedule you have. I mean, obviously you play the games you play. You have your St. Peter's and you have your, oh, uh, we go to St. Joe's. And, right. and these are games week in and week out. And you know and I know that any team in, in New Jersey, if they can beat Bergen Catholic, 
this season is there. Right. We, we know that the guys are going to come out swinging and take their best shot at us, right? So I, I think, you know, whether it, it, it whether we like it or not, we're going to have to buckle up every week, and we know we're going to get everybody's best effort. And, um, you know, we're definitely up for the challenge and something we talk about on a regular basis, you know, and, and, and we know that whoever we line up against every week, we're going to have to bring our A game. And, and that's the hardest thing, I think, at any level of football is just to, to oh. consistently stay the course and to be able to win every single day. You know, um, we talk about last year, we're legitimately one second away from being an undefeated football team. Uh-huh. And it's been 11 years since somebody's done that in this conference. Um, and, uh, you know, we certainly want to keep that in mind and, and have that as a, a very lofty a- aspiration. You definitely have to have the A game week in and week out. Your players have to com- come out and compete. You know, now we'll talk about some of the games. And one of the games that we're going to have, of course, let's talk about the meatball game. <laughs> see, we I did hear see about this meatball going, game. We go all the way into the meatball <laughs> game. But the meatball game is something that we do. We get a, my wife to get involved a little bit. She makes the meatballs. She's made a new way of doing it. And at the end of the game, the meatballs will be coming to you and your team. And, of course, the team you're playing is Paramus Catholic. But <laughs> that's a big game for us, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're planning all that, and it should be a lot of laughs, a lot of – Let's hope the game will be fine, and at that point you'll be pretty much on your way, hopefully, into to win season, everything sure. into the season. But we can't wait for that. You know, it's, it's, it's no, I always be- look forward to seeing you guys, right? So I just is there going to be any Italian bread with these meatballs? Well, we'll have to. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, we'll have to sneak. We'll have to sneak that. That'll have to be. We can't yeah. mention it because right. we could lose our license. Okay. You know? All right. But it'll have to be V I N O someplace. There we go. There we go. And we'll go yeah. over there, and hopefully the game will be out of no we'll, doubt. No earlier doubt. that we can all sit around and relax. Chianti's the move. Oh, <laughs> it should be good. Oh, I can't wait. Now I have to talk. about Last, you, you do have someone playing this year coming up to school, Bergen Catholic, your son, right? Oh, yeah. Well, just briefly he's, he's, still, he's still a freshman, but um, we feel really good about the entire freshman team. They really had a great summer, and they're doing a great job. We had a great mini camp with him here, and then uh, we put them in a couple varsity seven-on-sevens, and they certainly held their own, and uh, we feel like we you know, we have 61 freshmen coming into the program. We feel re- we're, we're proud Amazing. of that, that we have 61 guys coming in. And... Uh, yeah, I'm proud of them. I'm proud of all those guys. I think they, they really have a, a, a great group of guys coming in at 25 class. You know, Mike, coaching down there, it's got to be. That, he is one of the greatest guys around. <laughs> you know, I, I tell you, Larry, myself, and I, don't, we love the guy. I mean, we love, I mean, we love the Campanile. I mean, to me, yeah. you guys are ringing that bell all the time. <laughs> but, yeah, well, they're certainly going to get an education in, uh, in, in coaching with, with Campy down here, no doubt. But he's going to hold them to a high standard, and, you know, we feel good about the, the group. And, um, it, yeah, it's, it's great. I think that just getting in, involved into the culture of our school and understanding the expectation, coaches holding you to a high standard is a lot of what we want to be about, and uh, I think my father does a great job of that. Does he ever come to you and try to give you a, a particular play to use in the game? Like he Only used about to do every it? other play. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we did the game yeah. at, at Westwood, and he was with us. He, he said, let me run down. i got to go talk to the coach. i got to tell him about this stuff. No, but it's good to have that, that insight and, and to have people that really understand the system and what, what you're about. And uh, it, It's an added benefit, no question. You know, Vito, we at, at WCTV love love football, love sports, and we love the Campanile. What we have to do, we have to have another one of those sessions to get everybody there, including your sister. That'd the be best great. athlete, <laughs> as they say, right? You sure appreciate that, no doubt. We but have yeah, to have it. Yeah, well, it's been a long time, over 30 years. We've had, we've been, we've had a great friendship, and uh, everything you guys have done for us over the years at Westwood and, and here now, it's just I uh, can't, can't thank you guys enough for what you do for football. And, you know, someone may decide to make a football as the, as the cake, right? Right in the middle, I have a football, <laughs> big football. I know your mom must yeah. have done that in the past with all the athleticism. And many I, times, <laughs> many times. <laughs> well, Vito, we're going to give good luck to you on your season. Thanks, we'll John. be there. We're going to be doing several games and uh, keep up uh, our you know, constant discussion with us. And we'd love to come and love to see you. Yeah, and absolutely. We would love to see you win them all. You know, I appreciate just that. Run it all in. Have a great season. Thank you very Super much. Super job. All right. Thank you again. Appreciate it. All right. <laughs>
Well, we continue interviewing coaches in northern New Jersey. I'm very happy to have the head football coach here at the beautiful Ramsey campus, Adam Bayer. And coach, I want to thank you. They call you Coach Bear. So we'll call yeah. you Coach Bear. I want to thank you for taking time out uh, from your schedule. We caught you working on, uh, on helmets and you came over and I know you got more to do. Um, let's talk a little bit about yourself, give the uh, fans in Ramsey and across New Jersey a little insight into you. Um, this is your first, uh, second year coaching here at, Ram, uh, at Ramsey. Let me ask you something, what attracted you to the Ramsey program? Um, you know, just the town, the, the small, small town, small community atmosphere. Um, I was at Hasbro Heights the last 10 years, so very similar, um, very tight knit, you know, sport, athletics, academics is important here. And, um, you know, it's just a great place. I actually remember I was coaching at Bosco uh, back in, you know, 15 years ago, and there was a lot of, we had a lot of Ramsey kids. Uh, and I, I just remember those types of kids, and they're, they're probably some of my favorite kids on the team. Um, you know, with the Miley's, um, you know, Brett Kniff, uh, Jack Tempo. I, I remember these kids like it was yesterday. Uh, you know, probably older now, and you know, jobs and married and all. But uh, some of those kids were probably, you know, one of some of my favorite kids in the world. They're all from Ramsey, so I was like, wow, there's, you know, it's something special here. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the history of you. Uh, where did you start uh, your coaching? Your first coaching. Uh, my first coach, I actually started when I was 19. I, I, uh, I grew up in Fairlawn. I went to Fairlawn High School, so I, uh, I, I coached for the Fairlawn Junior Football Association. Um, I was, you know, 19, 20. Uh, then my, uh, my first coaching job was at Don Bosco. I was actually a, a wrestling coach first with, uh, with Nunzio. Um, and then that, you know, that led to a, a football job because um, I got into this building as a teacher. So you had no choice with, with Coach Toll to, but to coach football. So. Uh, I started with freshmen, and then uh, I was there for about four or five years. Uh, I went on to Beckton for two years, um, and then the last ten years before uh, before here, I was uh, with with Nick Del Caso over at Hasbro Heights. So you've you've worked with and worked under Del Caso, Nunzio Campanelli, Mike Campanelli. Um, I'm thinking, being a Giant fan, I heard you were pretty good Giant fan. Joe Judge always talks about the coaches that influenced him. Um, how do these coaches influence you? Uh, you know, they all... Each one of them individually. Yeah, yeah they all, um, you know, first of all, they're, they're not only they're great coaches, but they're great people. They're great role models, leaders. Um, you know, that, that's what stands out most about all of them. Um, you know, I coached Toll, uh, you know, with him. I was still young, so I was kind of learning. And, uh, you know, I just would always see him stress the, the basics and the fundamentals and how important um, that was. You know, as a young coach, you try to try to get creative with some you know crazy plays and all these uh unique ideas but you watch coach toll coach he just stresses on you know getting off blocks you know run to the ball tackling um you know that's that stuff's important and you know you're not going to find a better motivator than than greg toll um you know he can get you know he's had for years kids you know run through a wall for him um and he's still coaching today um which is great and then um you know nunzio i, I think i learned a lot about um you know, they just just X's and O's with him. He's just uh, you know, when you talk about offensive minds, uh, he's probably one of the top guys around in the area. You know, he's at Rutgers now, but um, I, I learned to to you know really the uh, you know, organization, um, X's and O's, and uh, you know just a passion for the game of football. You know, you can tell he just loves it, and that, that kind of um, I kind of got that from him. Um, and then Nick Del Calzo, I think uh, Coach D's he's he's taught me how to be a head coach. You know, he's he, for the right reasons for the kids. The kids always come first, and uh, you know you, you won't meet a more loyal guy than him. Um, you know, I was there for 10 years, and he kind of, the last five years, kind of, you know, kind of trusted me with the program, and and uh, you know to, to kind of run run practice, and you know he just kind of just let me do my thing, and uh, you know so trust is a big thing, and you know I got a great staff, I got a lot of great guys, um, and you know the trust is important when you hire coaches and. Uh, all my guys, all those, all the coaches I've, I've, I've hired, to just do a great job. You know. Let's talk a little about you. Are the uh, you're on the offensive side of the ball? Is yeah. That the, so will you be calling the plays this year, or are you going to? Yeah, that out? yeah, I'm going to call the plays. Call I called them last year, and uh, you know, it's tough to it's tough to give that up. You know, it's kind of like you know, high school football. You, you want to get in the fire, you know, you want to get a little dirty, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know, if, I don't know if I'm going to give that up for for a while. Let's talk about your team now. Um, John and I were talking with you before we came up and saw the Verona game. We were so impressed. We've been coming up here since uh, maybe 90 doing games and always a hard-nosed team. But your team last year, they kind of had a, years, a couple of years ago, they were 
they were getting, they were trying to build a program. They're getting started. But last year, your team looked like they're on the verge of really something special. Where are you today at the beginning of the 2021 year? Uh, I think it's a continuation from last year. You know, a lot of the kids coming up this year, a lot of them played, got a lot of uh, great experience last year. Um, you know, regardless of how many games we played, I think, uh, you know, each week uh, they, they battled. You know, they battled each week. They got better. Um, they really trust the process. They trust their coaches. I think they see that. I think that's that's pretty uh, pretty evident. Um, you know, the coaches, they, they, they just show how much they care about these kids. And, you know, they, I think the kids see that. You know, I think when... The, the kid sees that when you when they know that a guy you know someone cares about them you know again I always say that it's on how much you know it's how much you care um, and when kids see that uh, they'll they'll run through a wolf away so. so now we look at you have 22 on the field maybe you have 30 playing with special teams you want to leave anybody out but there's always a few kids that you want to talk about and I think everything starts with a quarterback on offense and a big defensive lineman or linebacker on defense talk a little about your offense uh, your quarterback and your running backs and the offensive line, the strength there? Uh, yeah, our quarterback's a senior, uh, Danny Veenstra. Danny's a uh, uh, first-year starter. He got some playing time last year. Um, we had Blake Creamer last year. Um, he did a, a heck of a job for us. Uh, so Danny kind of learned from him, and uh, he kind of, you know, every day, even though he wasn't a starter, I think every day he got better. He took advantage of his reps because he kind of knew that this was going to be his year. Um, uh, he's just a tremendous athlete. He's a uh, smart kid. Uh, he's a great kid, you know, he's just kind of leading the young guys now, um, the younger uh, quarterbacks underneath him. Um, and, uh, you know, he's going to have a great year. You know, he's had a great summer so far. We had a couple passing tournaments and, uh, you know, he's, he's getting better every day. So. Yeah, I heard you did very well on the uh, seven on sevens that you were involved in. So that's good. What about defense now? Who do you have on defense that we should look when we're doing the game? We should get to keep an eye on this individual. Yeah, um, I think uh, in the secondary, uh, Justin Martone. Uh, Justin's a ca captain, senior. Uh, he's a three-year starter. He might have been a four-year starter. I think he started as a freshman. Um, but he's just a tremendous – when you want to talk about tough, I mean, he's just just a tough guy. You know, he's like a coach's dream. Um, you know, just a uh, great athlete. Um, you know, fast, strong, athletic. He can catch. Uh, you know, I'm talking you know, offensively. I'm talking about him on offense. But defensively, he's just as good. I mean, he's a great downhill player. He's a free safety for us. Um, recovers well. Um, and uh, you know he's, he's going to he's going to have another big year for us, Justin Martone. And you do have a very formidable schedule. Looking him right in the eye, starting on September 3rd at the Westwood, WCTV will be there to cover that game. And the rest of the year, you have a pretty good uh, schedule coming up week after week for nine weeks, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, we uh, we play I'm a little new to this league, so it's it's a little uh, play Mawa. I think just going off of last year at Mawa. Um, we got Lakeland this year, West Milford, so a couple new teams in the uh, division, the way they structured it with the whole new uh, Union or Ivy League or whatever that is, the Ivy. Um, you know, we're, we got some tough uh, independent games, you know, other, other than the league. I mean, the league is itself is, uh, again, Lakeland, West Milford, Mawa, I think Richfield Park, um, Westwood, of course. Um, I might be missing a team. Yeah, you got to see the old nine of them. you got to try to remember. Yeah, kind of Passaic tough. Valley, I think, Passaic Valley. And then we have our... Uh, our crossovers are going to be tough. I mean, yeah. we, have, we end with Pascac Valley. Um, yeah. We have uh, Hanover Park, who's a group two. You know, they'll be in our section. And um, we've got Weequake, so a pretty group one uh, school from Newark. Uh, and they're, uh, they're athletic. We'll see them week two. So we see them on Ramsey Day. So that's so, a Saturday. So every week you're going to have a, uh, a challenge here to get up and play. And, and hopefully you'll do very well and move on in November. Uh, I want to thank you. It was very nice uh, talking with you, and uh, we'll be at Westwood on that September 3rd, just before Labor Day, for your first game, and uh, we'll be in contact with you and everybody up here at the Ramsey. I want to thank you and everybody up here at the Ramsey. Like I said, we've been coming, John and I have been coming up here since uh, the early 90s with Lou Molino as the uh, AD, and you always feel comfortable and warm when you come here to Ramsey. So thank you very much, and to the people here at Ramsey, look forward to seeing you in September. You got it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, we're here with uh, Coach uh, Dan Marangi on the campus of St. Joe's High School in Montvale, New Jersey. You got to make sure we get the right St. <laughs> Joe's. That's right. We did that last year. Dan, thank you so very much for giving us time. I know things are very difficult. You're running around trying to get the program together. It's 
things are all crazy. We talked to a lot of coaches. They were all saying the same thing. It's the crazy time, but it's a fun time for you. Isn't oh, it? it's it's definitely a fun time. You know, you could feel the season getting closer and uh, you're getting that itch to get going and uh, you know we're just excited about uh, our prospects. Now you have a couple of scrimmages planned uh, for this? Uh, yeah so August. we're going down to Union City and we're going to be uh, on the 16th and then uh, the 20th we're going over to Paramus Catholic. Going to go to Paramus Catholic and maybe we'll come by and take yeah. a look at that uh, scrimmage because we're going to have both of you hopefully we can get the DePaul game and have, uh, have you on our stations on, the, on mm -hmm. our system. Talk a little about your team. Um, you a young team? We're young, we're we're young. Uh, we got we got we got a nice balance. You know, I think we're a little bit on the young young side. Uh, probably a little in inexperienced, uh, to be honest. And uh, you know, by the time we hit uh, August 28th, the opening game, you know, everybody's got to be playing like seniors. So, you know, we graduated a, a great class last year, and uh, you know, we got we got good senior leadership, and we got some you know youthful talent. Before I get to, I got just a very quick question. Mm -hmm. You're opening up on the 28th of August. Opening up that early, does it pose some really um, challenging situations for you starting that early? Usually you start the 3rd, the mm -hmm. 8th, the 10th. This is August. This it's all August 28th, so, you know, and uh, we, we're starting, you know, this year, the, the state, we're starting a week later. So we basically have about two weeks of camp and, uh, you know, we're in the game week. So it definitely provides, you know. We have a challenge, but uh, we're always looking for challenges. Yeah, yeah up here you always want to, you always want to climb that yep. that mountain. Talk about your team, your quarterback. Uh, we saw one last year, very quick quarterbacks, uh, runs the ball very well. Who's yeah. going to be a quarterback? Uh, Luke Henrich. Gotcha. Okay, he's a rising junior, and uh, you know he's got all the intangibles and the leadership. He just uh, you know needs that game experience, and uh, you know I think he's going to be a, a tremendous player for us. And your running back. Uh, we have Luke Tucci, Sin Willis, Devin Miller Singh. So we got some we got some guys, um, you know, to replace. You know, everybody's looking that you know we got to replace probably the best player in the state last year. He's the best player in the state last year, but uh, we got guys that are more than capable to uh, you know pick up the uh, pick up the slack. Now we've been coming up. WCTV has been coming up to St. Joe since 1988. Mm -hmm. And every year, St. Joe's, I don't know how you do it, but you always have an outstanding offensive line. I'm assuming yeah. this year, with that smile on your face, you got a pretty good <laughs> offensive line. We're getting there. We're getting there. You know, like I said, a um, little bit of inexperience. We graduated four kids, and you know, we're replacing them with four, four, four new guys. So, uh, you know, they're coming along. Um, they're coming along nicely in practice. Uh, they've been competitive. So it's, it's good to see. Now talk about a schedule now. You have a very <laughs> interesting schedule. Tell us where you open and then some of the teams you have to play. Sure. Um, you know, there's no no doubt about it. I, think, I believe we have the toughest schedule in the state of New Jersey. Um, I wouldn't want it any other way. Look, look for, always look for challenges. So uh, we're going to be opening up against Our Lady of Good Counsel. They're going to be traveling here from uh, Maryland. Uh, the following week, we're going to be going down to St. Francis in Maryland, um, who's top five in the country. Uh, then you'll be... Uh, We'll play DePaul here on the 11th, and you know they're 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 loaded, and you know I know they've been uh, you know working on us, so it's new head coach, new head coach, so uh, Nikki Campanelli. Yep, and uh, you know so they're going to be a, a, a tremendous challenge. Yeah, you know then we'll then we'll hit our bye week and uh, go up to Pope John and play Montclair, and then we hit a gauntlet of uh, St. Peter's, uh, Bergen, Bosco all back to back. So. <laughs> Uh, and finish up with uh, Del Barton. So there's there's no there's there's no time off during this this year. It's going to be ten straight weeks of hard nosed tough football. That's 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 the that's the way you want it with the with the schedule uh, where you have to play a, a very a tough schedule and you you want that. Um, any challenges with the team? Any things you're looking forward to to? To move forward that you no, like I mean, I, I wouldn't call it a challenge. I, you know, I could, you know, just, uh, you know, our, our lack of experience, game experience, you know, getting ready and opening up with what, who we open up with, you know, they're going to have to be ready to go. So I see it, you know, as an opportunity to watch these guys grow and, you know, they're only going to get stronger throughout the year and, you know, that, that's going to be fun to see. Now, the St. Francis team, you played them a couple, last year or the year before, this pandemic. Two years, yeah, I mean, two years, the pandemic, pre-pandemic. That was a well-coached team. That was very, I, I guess you look at them on the tape, they haven't changed much over the last year. No, they? they haven't changed much. I mean, they just, you know, loaded with talent and, uh, you know, you can't make mistakes against teams like speed. that. A lot of speed. A lot of speed, a lot of size. They got everything you, you, you want and, uh, you know, we got to go to their house and play. So, uh, it's definitely no easy, no easy task, but, uh, you know, we're looking forward to it. You know, we always want to compare ourselves. Would you rather play them late in the year, beginning of the year? Does it make a difference? Doesn't make, doesn't make a difference not to me. Difference. Not, not, you know, yeah, sure, we'd love to have more, you know, more time under our belt, but, uh, you know, that, that's where it falls, and, you know, we're, we're going to be looking forward to it. This your third year as head coach here? Second. At the, 
Second, is it any better than, well, the first was the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my, I, do, I lose track of time with the pandemic. I tell people. Oh, it's been fun. Is, uh, it's, been, it's been fun. It was a challenging time mm -hmm. during the pandemic. You really had, things were changed, games were changed. Our oh, positions were changed. Yeah. That had to be very difficult. Yeah. I hope it calmed down a little bit this year, but it never really no, calms down. No, never, never, never calms down, you know, but that's, you know, that's, that's why we do this. You know, we, we like the action and uh, we're always, uh, you know, up, up to the challenge and always be, you know, can maneuver however we need to and, uh, you know, adjust on the fly. Well, we look forward to, we're looking forward to come up here uh, for the DePaul game. I think that'll be a great game against no Nick Campanelli, yep. you and Nick. I know you go back a long mm -hmm. time. You know the Campanelli's a long time. But we look forward to doing that, that game, and we'll be up here, and we're watching you. And, of course, thank you so very much. We know you a long time. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back a long time. You used to come into the bagel shop yeah. when, you were, when you weren't a head coach. No. You, had a little, you had just a little bit more time. Right? Uh, you had a little bit more time. I had a little bit more hair and you know, a lot of, lot of <laughs> other things. But you still look good. You still <laughs> look good. I want to thank you so very much for taking time. I know you're busy. you got to get back to your office. Best of luck, and we'll see you on the 11th of September. I appreciate it. Thank you for everything you guys do. Thank you. Dan Marangi, the head football coach at St. Joe's in Montvale, New Jersey. Hi, I'm here with Dan Sabella, the head coach of Don Bosco. Welcome, Dan. Uh, WCTV is starting the football for a 2021 and um, you know uh, <clears throat> maybe the best thing we can do is start off and talk a little bit about your staff your all your coaches that you have at Don Bosco absolutely well first of all best time of the year right great to have you guys here um, we're getting ready to start practice in a couple minutes and and, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you I'm, I'm really blessed to have the group of guys that we've assembled uh, working together our coaching staff guys who really look forward to coming to work every day and being around each other and uh, you know love this program put a tremendous amount of time in um, we got a, a bunch of them who are teachers in the school all right, who get to be around here all day, and other guys who, who, who aren't in the school but sacrifice whatever they have to do to be here as much as they can. So a uh, tremendous group of men uh, who love this program, love these kids, and, 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 you know, very fortunate to work with these guys. But, you know, we have to start today because the game then, 2020, at Bergen Catholic, uh, Larry and myself were there. I mean, we couldn't do the game at that point, but that game has got to be one of the the best games I've ever seen in Bergen County. Wow, that's... Uh, <laughs> and, and go back to that game for us. You yeah. know, the, the score, the 21-20 game. I hear it just last minute or so. Just bring that out to the people. Because yeah. we were... We were elated to watch that game. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're certainly all still smiling after that one. Uh, you know, it was... Uh, <laughs> It was a, a tough first half for us. We, we were down 14 nothing at the half, and uh, we just stayed with it. Our kids stayed with it, and uh, that fourth quarter, um, we just had a, a bunch of kids who made some crucial plays and some big moments and uh, found a way to win it at the end. Um, we got a huge stop on, 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 our, on defense to get the ball back with about a minute and a half left, and we went 74 yards or whatever it was. We, we hit a... Uh, you know, like a, a third and 28 to keep the drive going, and it was it was a great win for our program. Um, it was a fantastic game, one of the games that Larry and I will remember for a long time. Now let let's look at 2021, the new schedule. So you're going to be starting with uh, a way trip. Now this is a team out of Washington, right? Uh, Washington D.C. Yeah, yeah, we're going down. We're <laughs> playing St. John's College out of Washington D.C., which is a a really good program playing a tough league down there I think very similar to our league with teams like Gonzaga and St. Francis and some of those teams down in that corridor it's going to be a big challenge for us and then from there we go to Iona Prep now this is where I'll be playing at, at Rutgers right yeah so, again familiarity with the head coach down there show your boys down there and talk a little about that game yeah you know Iona Prep's a team that had a really good season last year. They played in the spring. Their head coach uh, seems to be doing a great job with them. They're getting better every year. And, and like you said, it, the, the opportunity to play in Rutgers Stadium um, will be a great experience for our guys, and it's, it's going to be a real formidable opponent. 
Just remember, week three, we go to Seton Hall. After that, uh, uh, Bergen Catholic, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The so, replay game. Yeah, so, <laughs> we, you know, we get into our league schedule after after the two out-of-state opponents. Uh, Seton Hall preps, are gonna, you know, there's there's no there's no gimmies in, on this schedule, that's for sure. Seton Hall prep will be a, a tough matchup for us, followed by a bye week, and then and then the big one, which is Bergen Catholic. Again, you you, you should be more than likely 3-0 and at that point, playing Bergen Catholic. And you know, playing Bergen Catholic... Uh, it's going to be one of the games, the best game in the state, maybe even in the country. No, I guess they'll be number one, right? They're at this point. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Listen, they're, they've got a, a real good team coming back. Where do I sign up for that three and zero? By the way, you know, is there somewhere? Because we got I, well, let's, let's we got a lot of work to do before we get to Bergen oh, Catholic. Yeah, uh, I'm just throwing point. out numbers at this point. You're <laughs> right. And the key is, if you can sign up at that point, it'd be tremendous. Yeah, because absolutely. Then you would have two undefeated teams. But you know what? If I was recruiting and sitting in Don Bosco and and I was the recruiting person. I would always have that tape of the 21-20 game to yeah. show people around that I'm up here, but let me tell you about this little game that we had, the 21-20 and the comeback. So you come back to Don Bosco. Yeah, yeah, that, that might not be bad to put up during our open houses. Unbelievable, you're right. Uh, so let's mention some of your players. I know uh, the one individual I remember, Heath, Ronnie Heath, who was a running back. I think he was a sophomore there last year. Yeah, yeah. Ronnie really had a breakout season for us. Um, um, he coming into the opening week, he was he was third on the depth chart, and uh, a couple guys in front of him were a little banged up. And Ronnie got an opportunity in week went, week one and went out and rushed for over 190 yards. And really, it's been his job ever since. He had a tremendous off season in the weight room. He's an explosive, powerful, hard runner. Um, Going to be. He's got two more years with us, so you know we'll, he'll be getting. He'll be a big part of what we do offensively. And you know. I look now, uh, even at the schedule, you know, seeing that both teams could be coming down in that game uh, undefeated, who knows. But then your schedule really is hard after that point. You have St. Peter's you got to come up with, week in and week out, and then you still have your Del Barton. I mean, these teams, it, it doesn't get easier for you, Coach. You got to be ready to go every single week. It's the parity. I think is as even as it's ever been. Um, you mentioned some teams who, who are much improved, and, and really anybody can beat anybody. You better be ready to play. Well, yeah, DePaul has got a very good team, and and week in and week on, you have to keep your players up. If not, you're right. Any one of those teams, an upset can result. Absolutely, and, and you know, staying healthy is important too. You know, you can only control that. <laughs> Uh, to you know, to a certain extent, but but that certainly helps. You want you want to be healthy because uh, this is, it's a grind. And then St. Peter's. What about St. Peter's now? New coach there, right? New coach. You know, we've uh, we've had. Uh, I think they beat us three in a row, including uh, the finals in 2019. So uh, we're excited that they're coming up here to Ramsey this year. We haven't played them up here in, in quite a while. But, uh, you know, listen, they, they always have as much talent as, as anybody, and that's <clears throat> that's another one of those ones games you have to you have circled. The new head coach there, I know we, the old one is gone, right, at, at this point? In time. Yeah, so it's it's Coach Hanson's son who's, who's okay. played at St. So, Peter's, and I don't think too much is going to change, you know? Well, Hanson will be in the sideline <laughs> next to him, next to the, the son, and say, son, it's my time to call this play. I know the play that I can beat, or I'll try to beat, Don Bosco or Bergen Catholic. Yeah, I'm sure. But you know, this has been a great interview. Uh, we talked, any any other players? I know we mentioned two players. You had a wide out and a, uh, and a running back. Yeah, I certainly want to mention our returning captain, Timmy Hinspeeder, who's a three-year starter at, at linebacker for us. And, uh, just a physical guy who, who pl gives you a thousand percent in everything he does. He's committed to West Point next year and he's going to run around and, and make plays for us all over the place. Um, <clears throat> we have a, a corner, Josh Baskerville, who's a senior who's uh, healthy this year for the first time and we're expecting a big year from him. And then, you know, a couple guys, Chase Basantis and Chris Moreno on the offensive line are both three year starters and, and, you know, guys who we feel like are going to make a big difference for us. So these are games that you got to have your A game at all times. But we hope that we'll be doing a couple of your games. And, you know, I believe uh, good luck to your Ironman. It's a beautiful feel. I'm, as we're talking, I'm looking at the young men, the size of these young men. 
<laughs> and we're ready to play football here, Coach. Can't wait. Can't wait. Great. Like I said, best time of the year. Can't wait to get going. And, and always a pleasure having you guys up here with us. We love, we love to come up here, and I want to see these games. And, you know, if I was ever recruiting and I had that win in my back pocket, 21-20 with Bergen Catholic, I would tell that young man, do me a favor, just sit down with me for a while. And I'm going to show you the type of football that we play at the Ironman. Absolutely. It's a great team. Good luck to you. Thank you, you so much. A great season. Thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Well, we're here with the uh, president of the Don Bosco High School, Bob Faggio. We're interviewing uh, Danny Sabella. Bob came by. We know him a long time, uh, Washington Township resident. Some of you, especially in the Italian touch, remember him as being one of the great athletes in uh, northern New Jersey when he played. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, football, but then talk a little about this wonderful institution here, Don Bosco Prep. Bob, thank you so very much for taking time out. I know you're busy as being the president. As you overlook the football program, your uh, thoughts earlier here in August? Well, it's just a great time of the year. You know, football season, the fall around the corner, and the summer, uh, just wonderful to see the numbers that are up here. 100 strong and, and, you know, players being around, the wonderful coaching staff, men that are uh, just true men of dignity and honor. Uh, what I love about our coaching staff is that, yeah, wins is, is very important in the culture of a, a winning attitude. But as I was sharing with you, watching a guy like Dan Sabella stop in a chapel throughout the day and you see him reflecting, to me, that's what Don Bosco's all about, having a, that Salesian presence and chapels on a campus where these men can go. And the boys have role models, role models that they can look up to. I remember talking to you a number, maybe last year or the year before, and you mentioned that you wanted Dan Sabella up here because you had him as a student. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I taught Dan in, in grad school down at St. Peter's University, and he was going for uh, the state championship at Pagoda and had invited me out to the game at Giant Stadium. And the way he carried himself in the classroom, the conversations that we had, and watching him on the sideline, there was just something really special about him that I thought was uh, very attractive. Never did I ever think I'd wind up at Don Bosco, and never did I ever think that the opportunity would arise, you know, to get a, a man of Dan Sabella's quality. Uh, we had when, uh, when Mike Teal uh, left, we had 140 applications in less than a week. And, you know, when everything was said and done, Dan, Dan stood at the end of that process. Uh, he's a special, special guy, and we're, we're very lucky to have him. Yeah, with WCTV, we go back with him to 93 when he was the senior starting uh, forward at Pagoda that won the Jamboree that we just began to cover. And when I met him, he said, you don't know who I am? I said, because I'm the answer, I was on, I was on that Pagoda team. Well, we went back and saw the, uh, the game, and I gave it to him. And there it was, the first minute or two, we hit a jump from the corner, and I said, he's got a great shot, and I've been his friend ever since because I said that. But yeah. he is an outstanding uh, uh, coach. He's a fine gentleman and a credit to your school. Now, speaking about the school, we'll get a little bit in about that. This is a, a school of higher learning at the, up here in Ramsey. We were here last year and we saw the beautiful campus. People don't get a chance if you come up to the football game and you just go a little bit more to your right, you're going to get a beautiful campus. Telling us what's going on new and exciting here at Don Bosco. Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of good things going on here at Don Bosco. We're 37 acres. We're going into our 106th year of history. Tremendous history with just tremendously successful people. And um, we are really proud of what's going on. We started the Pathway program. We have a business pathway. So if you want to go into the business world, you have four years of a curriculum uh, in, in business. We have a new uh, engineering and robotics pathway. We're building out our third floor of the new Savio Hall. That'll be all STEM related. And then we have a fine and performing arts pathway. So while everybody uh, sees me walk around the township with a Don Bosco uh, shirt on and they say, wow, you know, what a football, what a sports program. We're way more than a sports program. We're embedded in Salesianity of, uh, of faith. Uh, we're a, a home that welcomes. We're a school that educates. We're a parish that evangelizes, and we're a playground where boys get to, to hang out and have, and have a lot of fun. Sounds great. Um, what's your enrollment up here? Then? We're 800 strong, which we're really proud of. Uh, we have about uh, 203 incoming freshmen. 
which is which is a solid number, knowing that we're listen. The, the, the public education is, is, is unbelievable in Upper Bergen County. And our brother schools are, are just tremendous, tremendous institutions of academic learning. Bergen and Joe's and Paramus Catholic, just great people, right? So for us to be 200 strong in a pandemic, we're really, really satisfied with that number. We always like more, of course, but we're, we're strong, um, we're alive, we're healthy. And, you know, coming through the type of year that we had last year, we were in school every day last year through from Labor Day right through to the graduation through the end of June, uh, which was amazing. Mm. We played 19 different sports. Uh, every single student was in school every single day, had lunch, had a regular school experience here at Don Bosco. We're proud of the work that we did. We're proud of the fact that we were able to 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 come together as a faculty and a staff and execute a plan that took a lot of time and a lot of work and a lot of praying uh, to keep people healthy. Uh, and uh, I think Catholic education last year demonstrated that we're all about, you know, teaching the young. One more thing, as a president, you celebrate the past, you're working now in the present, but you always have an eye to the future. What does the future here hold for Don Basso that you'd like to see? start here and begin? Well, we're going to finish up our STEM and, uh, and we, we've had two very, very significant donors that have helped us finish the third floor. That STEM program is a game changer for us. And then ultimately, you know, looking at this facility up here, we would like to, you know, think about where do we go with getting a, a locker room facility up here and a coach's room. And so we have some things that we're thinking about. We also have a donor that's going to be paving our rear parking lot. One of the things that, that I feel very strongly about is we have 65% of our boys that play sports. I want to look at that the, the other 35%. So we're going to start uh, an intramural league up here. We're going to pave it. We're going to put in two basketball courts with glass backboards. We're going to put in two pickleball courts and two volleyball courts so that that 35 percent that's not connected, we connect them into the campus. Like you said, when you walk on this campus, it's very, very special. This is a safe haven for our boys with the world where it's at right now. I think them being on this campus is, is a place of safety. It's a, it's a place for brotherhood. It's a place for, for them to really be molded into men, leaders that lead, and lead from the front. And so our vision is to get that parking lot done sooner rather than later. And we have a lot of people that are very, very generous to us, and we're very, very grateful for that. Their experience here, they pay it forward all the time. That's fantastic. Don Bosco uh, started, uh, I guess, orphanages in it Italy for children who need a safe haven. And here at Don Bosco in Ramsey, you carry that on by having a safe haven for your, two, for your 800 students that you have enrolled here. Yeah, and it's really a, it's a changing community. We're almost 50% diverse, which I'm really proud of. And that's something that's, that's very, very special. So we're continuing to grow. We have our challenges, uh, but you know we work together as a team and there's nothing better than team. Thank you very much for coming up. It's always a pleasure talking to you. We'll be up here a couple of times to see your games. We're going to cover your game. WCTV will be at St. Joe's for your game at St. Joe's the end of October. We'll come up here, see a few games, speak with you. It's always great to talk to you and reminisce a little about what goes on here and talk sports. I enjoy it very much. Thank you for your Thank kindness. Thank you very much. That's okay. Bob Faggio. He's the president of Don Bosco Prep in Ramsey, New Jersey. Well, John, we went through all these schools. We saw these coaches. Uh, it was nice reminiscing with them. It was nice talking to them after we had the interview off the camera and we just chit-chatted about their family and what they did and what they did off-season and how they tried to get their teams ready for the upcoming year. It, 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 was a, it was a challenge last year, and I think they're taking a deep breath and they're just so happy to be back. You know, Larry, you and I got younger this time around. We needed that. Being away from that television, being away from the cameras and watching football. The greatest thing for us, we get younger, not older. 
Get away from this pandemic. We want football. Yeah, we did a couple of games last year. John stayed at one end of the, uh, the, 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 the booth, and I stayed on the end. And Ricky was in the middle. Sometimes we didn't hear each other. Sometimes we couldn't read. But we were at least we thought we were out. We were, get, we were getting out a little bit. Now we're back to normal. And we just thank everybody. And we're so grateful we could do it. Uh, a lot of people were not so uh, successful. So we're back. And talking to coaches, you know, you talk to them, you feel good. They, they put so much time in effort in and they're always looking to better their kids their program and make kids not only better in athletics to be better as you you know citizens of the united states it's unbelievable tremendous larry it we love it they love it we got to keep doing it and ida and our, our group oh does yeah. our job they keep us straight <laughs> yeah, they, they're looking to get get back we will have our schedule up on our bulletin board you can go to wctv dot uh, us and our schedule for the nine weeks will be there we go as far as november 6th when westwood will host lincoln and then after that it's playoffs and we have no idea where we're going to be with playoffs who's in it and if we can get permission to cover the game so we hope you enjoy the show to all the coaches the athletic directors and staff of all the schools that we visit thank you so very much it was a blast seeing you we enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed it as much as we did so stay tuned for for our schedule and we'll see you our first game will be ramsey at westwood